Now you're welcome, Max. So there were, of course, two All Ireland finals over the weekend. Limerick happy yesterday, Kilkenny very happy on Saturday. They won the Camogie Championship against Galway in the final at Crow Park on a scoreline of 114 to 111. I mean, even in the 56 minute, Galway were level, so this was not uh, easily won by any means. Denise Gall with the penalty ultimately put the game beyond Galway. Very happy to say we have Aunt Danny with us, who needs no introduction, was with the Kilkenny team since 07 as manager, stepped away uh, last year, 2019. Anne, you're very welcome. How are you doing? Great, Joe. Thanks for having me. Delighted to be able to join you on, on such a great occasion. Yes. Where did you watch the game? I was at Croke Park. I was lucky enough that I was with Nicky Brennan from um, Kilkenny Community Radio who had asked me to go with him and delighted that I was able to attend with him. Other than that, I would have been at home watching it like everyone else on the television. You don't want to over-egg things, but at the same time, for this Kilkenny team, Winners uh, twice in what four? Winners twice since 2016. It's a whole lot better than four losses in a row. I mean, that would have really been a bitter pill for them to swallow. I mean, look, it's not an amazing record. I'm sure they'll all say in the final, but at least winning two out of you know the last however many finals it puts a totally different sheen on this team as opposed to four losses on the bounce. It does, uh, to be honest, Joe. But and even uh, having said that. 2016, I think they were there 2014 and 15 and didn't win either. Yeah. So for Camogie and Kilkenny, the win at the weekend was just so, so important, to be quite honest. Um, you know, there's only so many times that you can ask the girls to go back to the well and, you know, it was such a hard job you know, for, for Brian to again, you know, to go for another year. So mm. for for the Camogie, you know, to stay strong and uh, for girls to stay interested, um, it was really important to get the win. Last year, you hit 17 points in the final and there were 314 conceded. So it was, it was a fairly open, free-scoring affair. This was this was grittier stuff on Saturday. This was a, a, a lot of fighting around the middle. It was, and I suppose, <laughs> you know, the... The, the rule change and the bit of physicality that has come into it now, I'd have to say in t last year we probably weren't ready for it. Uh, we didn't think it would be allowed and we didn't think it would happen, but certainly, you know, Brian and the lads had the girls really w well versed. You know, their training sessions at times were probably 15 against 17 or 18. And, um, you know, I spoke to Anne Dalton after it and she said, look, um, I was marking Kellyanne one night. Um, you know, I knew all about it. Uh, he had hmm. two on her one, another night, so um, she was well ready for the battle. And it was a fierce physical uh, encounter, but you know, a great game. Yeah, no, it was it was, it was gripping. And, and as I mentioned at the outset, 56 minute goal, we were level. Has it helped the game as a spectacle? Do you think that bit more physicality allowed? It has, it has. You know, you go back to, I suppose, the real disaster 2018 when there were so many frees and people left the game and left the ground said they were never going to attend the Camogie match again. I think it was a great advertisement for Camogie. And, you know, congratulations to Limerick on their great win yesterday. But I would have to say that probably as a spectacle, the Camogie All-Ireland on Saturday night was probably a better match. It certainly had more tension, that's to be sure. Like, this Galway team are tough and they weren't going away, even though Kilkenny probably had the better of it for a long of the game, not least the second half. They weren't quitting Galway. No, you know, and the worry was, you know, I had said all year and I thought all year that Galway were probably a better team this year than they were last year. They had the McGraths back and uh, Rebecca Henley, you know, powerful players and uh, six forwards, you know, that were well capable of scoring and being match winners on the day. But, you know, it was all down to the hard work, um, especially from our back line, to be quite honest. Claire Phelan uh, was absolutely brilliant. Uh, Megan at centre-back had a, had a stormer. Um, you know, it's hard to even to pick out one player out of the whole lot of them, you know, 36 on the panel, but there was uh, 17 that played on Saturday night and to pick a man of the match or one of the match, you know, was very hard. Uh, but I thought as a whole, the, the backs were brilliant, to be quite honest. You know, they really fought Colette Dormer, you know, could you meet anyone more determined than Colette and wouldn't you have her on your team any day? Um, but absolutely brilliant. Um, you know, the work rate, every single one of them from Grace Wells going to uh, to centre the field was a real master stroke. But both reasons for me, for, for the Kilkenny team, was uh, having Kellyanne Doyle back and to think that she was after doing her cruciate ligament in the league game against Cork earlier on in the year. Mm. The work that Dr. Martin O'Brien and Nick Lale were the physiotherapists had, have, had done with um, Kellyanne and her, Kellyanne herself, what she put herself through to get back there. And it was a real tonic for the Kilkenny team.
especially after losing um, um, Katie Power, you know, uh, Michelle Quilty, Edwina Keane, huge names from the team last year. Um, a real tonic for the girls and Killian had a, uh, had a mighty game at, at wing back. You'd have a great feel for this group as a, as a bunch of personalities, I suppose, and even just taking the final and even the semi-final against Cork, there is a real ability there to dig in and grind it out, you know, that a, a great team needs. Jeez, these have it. Like, the, the semi-final and the final on Saturday, like, they, they're not fun occasions. They're roll-up-your-sleeves territories. You know, the semi-final was a huge battle for them, um, uh, Joe, to be honest, to go down to Cork and, you know, <laughs> Angela's telling me they were in Cork at half past ten on that Saturday morning, right. you know, trying to get uh, prepared for the game that was going to be at half past twelve and going down to Cork and playing Cork, um, you know, down in Cork was a big ask to go one, three behind and, you know, to show the determination and the grit um, that they had to come back and that was really, I suppose, you know, the real winning of this All-Ireland for them. It was a tough game that they had needed uh, with all due respect to the teams that went before in the in the round robin I suppose the girls were contested um, they did have a good game against uh, Limerick but at that stage I think I suppose they had qualified but to go down to Cork and to come out with a win you know just gave them such confidence and mm. uh, such a boost um, you know it was, it was really the makings of them There was a point in the semi-final when they were seriously under the caution to be fair Cork will kick themselves they had some bad wives but the uh, moment that released a bit of pressure was when Aoife Doyle won a free in the semi-final and they got a point which just nudged them a little more out of distance. And then uh, yesterday, you know, in her first year as kind of a starter, Aoife Doyle pops up with four points from play. Probably should have had a goal if we're being, you know, uber critical, but four points in an All-Ireland final from play. Uh, really impressive. And, you know, she's added to the old breed who've been there since 16. She has, you know, and uh, you'd have to say four super points. And, you know, Aoife last year, um, we had brought her on as a sub and, you know, the, just the day didn't go well for her and we had to take her back off. So, you know, that probably didn't help her confidence. But um, Brian and Tommy and um, the backroom staff, you know, that he has and the lads that he had with him, Philly and, and um, Pat and Ray, you know, really worked with all the group and to help and, you know, instill a confidence in them. And, you know, she'll be a, a classic uh, Classy player going going forward. You know she's very young, uh, but very talented. Has some speed, and and as he said, you know probably could have ended up with two two, if not two three. You know, but um, a great display, especially for a girl, young girl starting in her in her first All Ireland, as did Mary O'Connell and as did uh, Kate, Katie Nolan. You know, I thought Katie Nolan really really worked hard. You know, for the smallest player on on the on the pitch. Um, she was work, uh, Mark and Sarah Durvin at one at one stage, and it was you know six foot something against four foot nothing and she came out with ball after ball you know I thought she was brilliant um, Aoife Norris in the goal her first All-Ireland so when you when you consider all the new girls that Brian had introduced you know and, and put his faith in you know it was you'd have to say it was it's a, a brilliant result for Kenny Camogie I saw a huge number of the players and Brian himself name check you and your contribution was it in any way bittersweet not to be a part of it or was it just pretty much sweet all the way Look, I was just so thrilled and so thrilled really for Brian because, you know, it's easy to criticise the manager when a team loses. You know, it's the first thing that will happen. The manager is always blamed and, you know, for Brian to take up the mantle and I, I know the heartache that he went through last year, you know, with Kieran's College, uh, uh, losing a replay um, you know his very good friend brother Damien passing away the week before our All Ireland last year going to Croke Park and got away beaten so he had a really really tough time for, but for me you know yesterday I was just so delighted for, for the girls and mm. I was so delighted for Brian and the management team that you know he stuck with them and, and got the win and you know credit to the girls you know there was four of them at my house yesterday morning delighted to see them and mm. um, we had a great all natter about the game and you know I was just so happy to be able to put things in place and you know Brian and the guys are there have brought it on I wouldn't have been able to do it um, you know in T20 to be quite honest you know I I was I suppose just spun out from the, the effort from the four years bef before but mm. happy to leave it in good hands and you know um, as it proved you know it was the right decision for me to move away Well you've certainly left it in good hands I was looking eight of the uh, starters on Saturday were there in 2016 as starters so there's a, there's a really strong spine of the team and then we've mentioned those newer players coming through do you feel there's a couple of more in this team make up for some lost time? Look <laughs> 
to be honest, Joe, when we got the win in 2016, you know, I said, you know, it's, it's the break that we needed. Mm. Uh, and, you know, we'll roll on from there. And sure, you know, we, we'd contested the next few All-Irelands and just were unfortunate that we didn't get over the line. They're good enough, certainly good enough. It doesn't always work out that way. You know, you have to stay working um, at your game. You have to stay, you know, stay focused and make sure, you know, that everyone is still rolling in behind you. Certainly, it's great for Camogie that these new players, um, you know, got the, their start. The girls that played in the first All-Ireland just still have it. now a taste of success. They know what it is, you know, to... Um, to win an All Ireland and what it takes. Michelle Teen was with on our panel for two years. She had to, you know, work her her way onto that team and and do her time, you know, as a sub for a long time. And she got her chance and had a great year. And the other girls that are on that panel now have to realise that, you know, they have to do their time as well. Mm. Plenty of young players that are there with Brian, you know, and hopefully that will stick with it. And but you can never say never, you know. It's not easy winning All Ireland. Um, you have to work at it, but certainly can Kenny have the have the spine of the team and they have the players. I know you have to go, so before you go, just one last question. You have been a part of this game for a long time now. You're an important voice in the game. There was obviously much talk last Saturday in the fallout from the Cork uh, Galway football situation and talk of amalgamation and, and where you know the, the women's game is. Uh, did, did the pros seem fairly obvious that suddenly the women's game could plug into all of these facilities and be... Uh, catered for, whereas it would seem that like lots of teams are spending too much time phoning around, begging for a pitch, and that that's no way to run things in 2020. Would you be in favour of an amalgamation bet between the three associations, and is that where it needs to go, or what would you like? I'd love to see it amalgamation. Um, you know, I've been saying it all the time, Joe, and I can certainly tell you from the experience that I had with working with uh, Ned Quinn and Jimmy Welch, the, the hurling board in Kilkenny, they have nothing but... Um, you know, praise and encouragement for Camogie. Um, I think it is the way to go. It was, you know, disgraceful, really, what happened to the Galway team um, to think, you know, that they were travelling in their cars and they only got so much time on the to, to warm up. And I think everyone can work together. I keep saying that, you know, the heart of the GA is, is the female uh, women that are behind the men, you know, pushing them, whether it's secretary, whether it's chairperson, whether it's washing jerseys. You know, we have such a, a, a part to play in the GA that we really should all be under the one umbrella and be recognised, you know, for the great work that women do in, in the GA. Mm. Yeah, well, I just saw the TV figures there. I think a quarter of a million people tuned in on Saturday to watch the game. So, you know, the, it, it's only progressing. It's just how quickly can we get there? Anyway, that's for another day. Listen, congrats. I know you were a, a very happy onlooker, clearly, and you've more than played your part in Kilkenny's success. And Danny, thanks so much. Thanks, Joe, for, for, for calling. Just delighted for the girls. And, you know, again, congratulations to Galway. They're a, fa a, a fabulous team and, you know, they're, they're not gone any place yet, but um, delighted for the Kilkenny girls. OK. And Danny, thank you.